Israelites. The Israelites are you so-called Negroes, Hispanics, you so-called West Indian blacks, you so-called Haitian blacks, and you so-called Native Americans. Give me Amos, the third chapter, verse seven. Amos 3 and verse 7. Yes, sir. The book of Amos, chapter 3, verse 7. Surely the Lord God will do nothing, but he revealeth his secret unto his servants, the prophets. Read it again. Surely the Lord God. The Bible says, surely the Lord God. What God is this talking about? Is there anybody in the audience that can tell me what God is this talking about? Is this the God of everybody? The God of the whole world? The, the God of the so-called Asian man? The God of the so-called Arab man? What God is this talking about? Get me Luke verse, chapter 1, verse 68. Because in America, you so-called blacks and Hispanics and Native Americans, you've been thoroughly destroyed. The so-called white man has put a mental beating on you. Right. That's lasted for over 400 years. Right. You foolishly believe that God is the God of everybody. But God is only dealing with a certain nation of people. And it's written in the Bible. But you have failed to pick up the Bible and read it for yourself. Let's find out who is the God, the God of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. Is he for everybody or is he only for a certain group of people? Luke chapter 1 verse 68. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel. Read that again. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel. You hear that, brother? God is only the God of the Israelites. Who are the Israelites today? You blacks, you Hispanics, and you Native Americans. That is a secret that's been hidden to you for over, for over hundreds of years, centuries, that you so-called black people, you are the greatest people that ever walked this planet Earth. You Jamaicans as well. You Puerto Ricans, you Native Americans, but you walk around with that low self-esteem because that hasn't been taught to you. Your identity and your heritage has been robbed, has been taken from you from the so-called white man. Give me Amos 3 verse 7 again. Amos 3 verse 7. Surely the Lord will do nothing, but he revealeth his secret unto his servants. You hear that? God said he will do nothing he will do nothing unless he reveal his secret, his secret unto his servants. What is the secret of God? Does anybody know in the audience? Come on, I know there's some Christians in the audience now. Don't act like you don't hear us. What is the secret of God? What is God's secret? His secret is that you so-called blacks, you Hispanics, and you Native Americans, you are the Israelites that the Bible speaks of. But you don't give a damn about that. You walk by with your head, you scorn, you make faces, you laugh. Right. Why? Because you've been thoroughly destroyed by the so-called white man. You call yourself African-Americans, Negro, nigger, Spix, Puerto Ricans. You can't find that in the Bible. You are the, cho the true children of the nation of Israel. Read that again. Surely, surely the Lord will do nothing, but he revealeth his secret unto his servants, the prophets. You hear that? Until he revealed his secret unto his prophet, unto his prophets, the servants. Because the servants were the prophets. Who were the servants of God? Only the nation of Israel, not all nations. Because guess what? Whether you like it or not, all nations cannot be saved. All nations are not going to be holding hands in the kingdom of heaven singing Kumbaya. You can't find that in the Bible. Right. Jesus Christ, the black man, only died for the nation of Israel. He was only sent to the nation of Israel. Homie Amos 3 verse 7, Matthew 15. Matthew chapter 15 verse 24. Let's see if Christ died for everybody. Because a lot of you walk by, you're like, damn, these, these dudes in purple are crazy. What are they talking about? The white man taught me all my life that Christ died for everybody, that everybody could inherit the kingdom of heaven. Let's find out, read. But he answered and said, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Who are lost people today? Or the so-called white man lost? 
is, is the so-called white man lost? Is he lost as a people? Let me ask you something. Does the so-called white man have his own land? Does the so-called white man have his own heritage? Speak a little louder. Does he have his own language? Does he have his own laws? Is his face on his currency? Exactly. The Asians have that as well. And the Arab. Why are you so poor blacks and Hispanics you don't have a damn thing? Why you don't have nothing? You've been in America for over 400 years, but you have nothing. You have nothing. You don't print your own currency. You don't pass your own laws. Why is that? Have you ever asked yourself why you've been so destroyed? Have you ever asked yourself, are you destroyed? Have you ever considered that? No, you haven't. No, you haven't because we have grown comfortable in the land of our captivity. And yes, we are yet this day in our captivity. Give me Baruch 3 verse 8. Baruch chapter 3 verse 8. This is for everybody in the audience that think, um, that think America is the, is the land of their rest. Behold, we are yet this day in our, in our captivity, where thou hast scattered us for a reproach and a curse, and to be subject to payment. You hear that? You hear that black man in the audience? You Puerto Rican men, you Latin men. God said he has scattered us amongst the nations as a reproach. How were your forefathers brought to this country? Did they come here by way of TWA? Did they come here by the way of Boeing 777? Huh? Did they take the Staten Island Ferry? No, they were dragged here. They were dragged here to serve captivity and we are the, 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 the descendants of those people that came over here on slave ships. Read it again. Behold, we are yet this day in our captivity, where thou, where thou hast scattered us for a reproach. For a reproach, because you so-called blacks, you are a reproach. You are a reproach. Right now, what's going on in Ferguson, um, Missouri, with the brother Mike Brown that got shot. The so-called white people don't give a damn about you. No, but you'll, go, you'll continue to, to follow his ways, to follow his instructions, his philosophies continue in his demonic religions. But he'll shoot you dead on the street, he'll turn our women into whores, and you'll continue in that. You'll continue in his ways, because you have yet to consider that you are the Israelites that the Bible speaks of. Get me Amos 3 verse 7 again. Amos. Amos chapter 3 verse 7. Mm -hmm. Surely the Lord will, will surely the Lord God will do nothing, but He revealeth His secret unto His servants. Now God's secret has been revealed. God's secret has been revealed to His servants, because we are the servants of God. We strive to keep His commandments to the best of our ability, and God has revealed His mysteries to us that we are the true children of Israel, not the so-called white man calling himself a Jew. There's no such thing as a Caucasian Jew. The real Jews are so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. What's another secret? That nuclear missiles are headed to America. America will be destroyed. America is Babylon the Great when you read it in the Bible. God has given you a chance to wake up in these last days to repent before he completely obliterate America off the face of the map. Jay-Z, Beyonce can't save you. Right. Because we know that those people are some of your idols. That's who you look up to. Those are your role models. Instead of the one true God. Instead of Sarah, Miriam. Right. Hadessa. Instead of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, you look up to these stupid hip-hop stars that can't do a damn thing for you. Right. And these dumb pastors that teach you lies. Many of you are in your 40s, 30s, 50s, you don't even know your nationality according to the Bible. Ask the so-called black man what's his nationality, you're gonna get 10 different answers. I'm an Asiatic black, I'm a Negro, I'm a black man, I'm a color. I'm an African American, two different continents, a hyphenated nationality. All this time in America, 
All this time in America and you yet don't know your nationality. You Hispanics too, man. The Bible, the Bible says the so-called Puerto Ricans, Hispanics, you are a silly dove. Because you continue to call yourselves Puerto Ricans, a rich port. Because that's what the word means. But no, you are from the tribe of Ephraim, from the nation of Israel. Get me Job 9.24. Why has this been a secret to our people for so long? Job chapter 9 verse 24. The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. The earth is given unto the hand of the wicked. The earth is given unto the hand of the wicked. Let's find out who the wicked is. Matter of fact, first question. I know we got some smart people in the audience. Who runs the world today? Who runs the planet Earth today? Is it the Asian man? No. Is it the Arab man? No. He's getting his behind blown to pieces over there in Iraq. Is it the African man? No. Who left? Who, who is left on the chart? The so-called white man. The so-called white man starting from Alexander the Great all the way on down. Starting from the Greek Empire to the Roman Empire, these people have been in power ever since. God says the earth is given unto the hand of the wicked. You know what? Let's get the, the first book of Maccabees. Let's prove that. Hold what you got. Let's get Maccabees. Yes. Let's get that. Let's prove that wickedness and evil came on the earth when the so-called white man came into power. And we know what we're saying is going to hurt some of your hearts. Why? Because you have the so-called white man on your brain. When you go to bed, you think about it. When you get up, you think about it. When you eat, you think about it. When you use the bathroom, you think about it. Just look at our woman with their blonde hair. Here you got a dark-skinned sister, as dark as Wesley Snipes, but her hair is blonde. What does that tell you about the sister? Right. You're as dark as Wesley Snipes, but your hair is yellow, like Big Bird from Sesame Street. Right. What in the world is that? That's how you know our sisters are destroyed. Destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Let's read what you got. The book of Maccabees, chapter 1, verse 1. And it happened after that Alexander, son of Philip, the Macedonian, who came out of the land of Shittim, had smitten Darius, king of Persians, and Medes, that he reigned in his stead, the first over Greece. So Alexander the Great, we call him Alexander the Freak, because he was a well-known bisexual homosexual. He had sex with little boys and the men in his army. He overthrew the Persian and the Medes, which was another dark nation. And when Alexander the Great came into power, this is what happened. Verse 7. So Alexander reigned 12 years and then died and his servants bear rule. Every his servants were other so-called white people. So you may understand. Read. And his servants bear rule, everyone in his place. And after his death, they all put crowns upon themselves. So his kingdom was divided amongst his friends. His kingdom was divided amongst his servants. Read. So did their sons after them many years. Oh. And evil. And what? And evil. And righteousness. And evil. And good. And evils. And evils were multiplied in the earth. God says when the so-called white man came into power, evils was multiplied in the earth. So what you Negro surprised for was going down in Missouri. You getting shot down in public, unarmed. What you Negro surprised for when you got the so-called white man passing homosexual, homosexual laws? that two men could get married, two women could get married. Right. What you surprised for? What are you surprised for? The Bible says this is the mystery of iniquity because it's a mystery to our people that this man is the devil on earth. It's a mystery to some of you so-called blacks and Hispanics. Read, read Job again. Jonah. Job, Job, Job. Chapter 9, verse 24. Say Mike one. The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. The earth is given unto the hand of the wicked. So the Bible tells you, guess what? That the earth is given to the so-called white man. He's the wicked that the Bible talks about. And God is using him to chastise you. 
God is using the other nations to chastise you. Give me some, hold what you got. Give me Psalm 17. You know what I want, right? Psalm 17 and 13. God is using the other nations to afflict you. Until you return to God's laws, you will continue to get shot down on the street. Until you return to God's laws, you will make up the majority of the people in the prison systems. You will make up the majority of people with affliction and AIDS and different diseases until we come back to the one true God. Read what you got. Psalms chapter 17 verse 3. Thou hast proved mine heart. Thou hast visited me. No. No. Verse 13. Arise, O Lord, disappoint him. Cast him down. Deliver my soul from the wicked, which is thy, which is thy sword. So the wicked is God's sword. You ever ask why the so? What is it? Why the so-called white man and the black man cannot get along? Slavery was abolished in the middle 1800s. How come the so-called white man can't get along with us till this day? Why is that, brother? Come here, come here. Because we're here for our people. All right? Don't be afraid to come talk to us. We're here for you. All right? We're not in these stupid churches hiding behind religion. We come out here to the people to teach you who you are according to the Bible. How come the so-called white men and the so-called blacks and the so-called Hispanics and the so-called Native Americans cannot get along? Why is that? Because it starts with the fact that everyone keeps saying that Lincoln freed the slaves. But if they were free, why they still technically refer to as being slaves? Exactly. That's a good that's a good point. Free slaves. Because yes, he emancipated right. the Emancipation Proclamation. However, you can read in his different books and his different um uh, dialogues and interviews that Abraham Lincoln he said truly he did not want to sleep free the slave. If he could have preserved the Union without freeing the slaves, he would have done so. That is basic history. But you blacks, you don't care about that. You don't care about that. You know what you care about? BET. You care about twerking. You care about the latest fashion. You care about Atlanta housewives, hip hop wives. You care about following the philosophies and the ways of the so-called white man. But God is trying to call you out of that. God says that the so-called white man is your enemy. And he's using him to afflict you until you come back to him. Give me that in Genesis 25. Because what the brother just said about Abraham Lincoln is true. But it's deeper than that. Let's see if that's recorded in the Bible. If the enmity between the so-called blacks and the so-called white man is written in the Bible. Genesis, the 25th chapter. Genesis, chapter 25. Verse, verse 25. Verse 22. And the children struggled together within her, within her. And the children struggled together within her. And she said, if it be so, why am I thus? And she went to inquire of the Lord. So this sister Rebecca went to inquire of the Lord because she was pregnant and she was having much pain in her stomach. Her pregnancy was not easy. She was going through a rough pregnancy. You, you hear that sister? I will fall Poor mother Rebecca was going through a rough pregnancy. She was going, she had pain. She went to the Most High to pray to the Most High to ask the Most High, look, if this is of you, Most High, why am I thus? Why am I having these pains? The Most High is going to explain it to her here. Verse 23, and the Lord said unto her, two nations, two what? Two nations, two nations, two nations, not one nations, two nations are in thy womb. So two nations, two different nationalities are in your womb. And two manner of people, two manner of people, so not only are they two separate nations, they, they have two different mannerisms. Read. Shall be separated. Shall be what? Shall be separated. Shall be what? Shall be separated. Shall be separated. Now you want to know why we can't get along with the so-called white man? Why the civil rights movement was a farce? Why the um, Emancipation Proclamation was a farce? Why this assimilation, integration, garbage was a farce? Because it's of, the, it's of God. God said he does not want us joined with these other nations. Why the Constitution has nothing to do with you people? So this day they say you are what, three-fifths or two-fifths of a man? They still haven't changed that. But you think this man is your friend. 
But God says, no, it's time for you to wake up. God is a God of war. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is a God of war. Why do these other, other nations know that, but you simple blacks and Hispanics, you don't know that. You want to hear love, 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 and prosperity. Ain't time for that. You got a time for war, a time for love, a time to kill, and a time to hate. That's what God says. But you want to hear love, love, love. We're not coming out here to teach love. Love, love, love. You want love, go home and give your son a hug. You want love, keep the commandments of God. Read what you got again. And the one people shall be stronger than the other people. You hear that, sister? Sister right there with the hat? God says one people shall be stronger than the other people. Not only does she have two different nations in her womb, God says one nation shall be stronger than the, than the other. Are so-called Negroes today stronger than the so-called white man? Let's start with the physical aspect of it. Who dominates the majority of the sports? So-called blacks. Now let's look at the spiritual aspects. We're the one that's seeking a whole bunch of different religions. We're the one that's into that, not the other nations. Why when the so-called white man is getting afflicted, what is the first thing he does? What is the first thing that the so-called white man does when he's catching hell? What does he do? Do you know? He either shoots up a school or he kills himself. Anybody heard of Robin Williams? Robin Williams, he was rich. That man hung himself with a belt and slit his wrist because the most I put Parkinson's on him. How many of our brothers have Parkinson's? What is the suicide rate amongst you blacks? You're not the first ones to kill yourselves. We're the ones that catch in hell in the ghetto. We're the ones that are crack afflicted, cocaine afflicted, disease afflicted. You don't see us killing ourselves because God says, guess what? We will be a stronger people, both physically and spiritually. Read that again. And the one people shall be stronger than the other people. Huh? And the elder, who's the elder? The elder was Esau. Esau is the biblical name of the so-called white man. That's the biblical name of the so-called white man. Because there's, all, there's over 18 nations in this Bible. All of us come from a nation in this Bible. Who are you? Who are you, brother, with the white hat? What is your nationality? What is your nationality according to the Bible? Do you know? Can you tell me? What's your nationality? You don't know. A man that has no answer is a man with no understanding. Because we're going over the Bible. The easy way out is not to understand, but we understand that. Not to find fault with you, brother. Because we come out here for you. You are our brother. We come out here to teach. Teach you people that you are the Israelites according to the Bible. Right. You are the real Jews according to the Bible. You are the jewels of God. Right. You are the diamond in the rough. You are the apple of God's eyes. Right. Thus saith the Lord. You are not niggers. You are not spicks. You are not coons. God calls you the children of Israel. So we got to wake up in these last days to who we are. All right, drop Genesis. Go back to Job now. Job 9, verse 24. The book of Job, chapter 9, verse 24. The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. So we, are, we already established who the wicked is. We already established who runs the earth. If anybody could prove me wrong, please step up. Because we know it's the so-called white man that runs the world. So who is this Bible talking about? Yep, it's talking about your Brad Pitts. It's talking about your Robin Williams, your George Bushes. It's talking about the so-called white man. He is the one that's running the world. God says the earth is given into the hand of the wicked. Read on. He covereth the faces of the judges. Stop. He covereth the faces of the judges. Who are the natural judges of the earth? Who are the gods of the earth? Because the word gods just mean judge. Let's prove that. Give me Psalms um, 82. I believe it's Psalms 82 verse 1 or Psalms 80. 82. Start at the first verse. Let's prove what we just said. Our forefather Job said the earth is given unto the hand of the wicked. The wicked covers the face of the judges thereof. Let's find out who are the judges. Psalms 82 verse 1. God standeth in the congregation of the mighty. He judgeth 
among the gods. Hold up. There's only one God of the earth. There's only one creator of the universe. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Let's read that again because God says he, stand, he judges amongst the gods. Is there something wrong with the Bible now? Is God saying that there are other gods? No, that's not what it's talking about. The word God just means judge. There's a supreme judge, which is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, when you repent in the kingdom of heaven, guess who's going to be the new gods on the earth? You, if you repent and keep God's laws. Because we're going to use this Bible to judge the earth in righteousness. Read that part again. God standeth in the congregation of the mighty. Huh. He judgeth among the gods. You hear what God is calling you, black man? You black men with your pants below your butt? What in the world is that? What happened to our black youth? Why you black men are walking around showing your pants, showing your boxes? Some of you are even showing your panties because some of you are cross dressers. What the hell is going on with our so-called black men? God is calling you mighty. Pull your pants up, black man. God is calling you God. Pull your pants up and be men. Walking around with that effeminate spirit. God says, no effeminate shall inherit the kingdom of heaven. Let's get that real quick. 1 Corinthians 6 verse 9. Pull your pants up. Nobody want to see your dirty drawers. Read 1 Corinthians 6 verse 9. 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 9. Uh -huh. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Let's go over some unrighteous things that may prohibit our people from inherit the kingdom of God. Read. Be not deceived, uh -huh. neither fornicators. No fornicators. What is, fornica what is fornication? What is fornication? When you break the laws of marriage. Right. That is fornication. Adultery is fornication. Bestiality is fornication. Homosexuality is, homo um, is fornication. Lesbianism is fornication. Having threesomes is fornication. God says no fornicator shall inherit the kingdom of God. Read that again from the beginning. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Uh -huh. Be not deceived, neither fornicators. You hear that, sister? If you want to read about the laws of fornication, you go to the book of Leviticus, the 18th chapter. And it tells you what fornication is. God says, know you not that fornicators will not inherit the kingdom of God. And when God says something, guess what? He stands on his word. So we come out here, sister, on the Sabbath to teach you all who, who you are according to the Bible. To teach the Hispanic men, the Mexicans, the Guatemalans, the, Hondo the people from Honduras, that they are the children of God. They are the Israelites according to the Bible. Give the sister a flyer so she can learn something. Read. No idolater. Idolatry. So if you're an idolater, you will not inherit the kingdom of God. What is an idolater? What are some levels of idolatry? Because first, idolatry starts in your mind. Anything could be an idol. To some of you black men, guess what? Your woman is your idol. The black woman with the big behind is your idol. You will commit sin. You will break God's laws to satisfy her, to appease your woman. What is the next level of idolatry? Christianity. That's right. Where is the image of the beast? Where is he? Bring it forth. Jonah, come here. What is another level of idolatry? Hold it up. Stand out there. Hold it up for our people. That is a level of idolatry because we know our people, this is who you look up to. When you do the research, this was a real life man by the name of Caesar Borgia. Leonardo da Vinci used his image to paint as the new Christ in the Renaissance. That's why the word Renaissance means rebirth. The rebirth of what? The rebirth of the so-called white man into power. Jonah, show it to your left so the people on the bus can see it. You see that, brother? The bus driver, you see that, brother? That's not Christ. Christ was a black man who looked like you. Christ was not a pale-faced, leprous bastard. That's right. That's what the Bible says. So that is another form of idolatry. Because we got our people that are into Christianity, Roman Catholicism, Baptists, Seven-day Adventists, Jehovah's wickedness, that is not in the Bible. You are the Israelites. God didn't give you religion, he gave you laws. God didn't give you no religion. 
You can put it down now, Jonas. Greed. Nor adulterers, nor adulterers, nor adulterers. Many of us were guilty of that. So we have to repent and keep God's laws and do better. God says if a man is married, he shall not lay down with another woman. God said a woman shall not do the same. A woman is not supposed to sleep with a married man. A married man is not supposed to sleep with another woman. But we know many of you people in the audience are guilty of that. But guess what? You can repent in Christ. It's not the end. Christ came so you may have a chance at inheriting the kingdom of heaven. Read. Nor effeminate. Nor what? Nor effeminate. What is effeminate? What does effeminate mean? Anybody in the audience over here? Anybody know what the word effeminate means? When a man is effeminate, what does that mean? That means he has female tendencies. That means he has female and effeminate ways. Whether it's cross-dressing, whether it's talking like a girl, acting like a woman, fantasizing about another man in his head, that, those are effeminate. Our forefathers, our forefathers were not effeminate men. They were strong black men. Strong Israelite men who stood for something, who stood for the laws of God, stiffly. Read. Nor abusers of themselves with mankind. How, do, how does one abuse themselves with mankind? That's when you're homosexual, you're bisexual. Whether you're giving or receiving is the same thing. We don't want to hear, oh, I'm not the one giving, I'm the one receiving. So guess what? I'm, 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 um, I, I, I ain't gay. It works both ways, whether you're taking rod or you're sucking rod, whatever you're doing. There's no excuse for you gay men in the audience, for you effeminate men in the audience. It's time, no excuse. No excuse, and guess what? Even though you ain't put it forth into action, even if you're watching it, even if you're watching it with your naked eyes, guess what? That is a form of abusing yourself with mankind. Whether you're watching gay porn, whether you're watching two men bang in front of you at an orgy or gang bang party. And I gotta speak like this because this is what our people are into. Right. We know what goes on in our community, but we are not afraid to speak up about it. God says, even if you advocate it, that's abusing yourself with mankind. Let's prove it. Because you're probably saying in your head, well, brother, guess what? I'm not partaking in the act, but I like to watch two men have sex. I like to watch gay pornography. God says, no, you're not supposed to do that. Get me Romans, hold what you had in um, 1 Corinthians. Get me Romans 1. Start around the 26th verse, I believe. Romans 1, 23. Let's see what you got. Romans chapter 1, verse 23. And verse 24. Verse 24. Wherefore, God also gave them up to uncleanness. So God gave these people up to their uncleanness because they didn't want to repent. They didn't want to repent, so the Most High took that spirit from them or increased the wickedness that was already in them. God said he gave them up to your uncleanness, read. Through the lust of their own hearts. Because abusing yourself with mankind, homosexuality, lesbianism, that is the lust of your mind. That is your own personal lust. Because God created man and woman upright. God did not create homosexuals and bisexual freaks of nature. Read. To dishonor their own bodies between themselves. Because two men having sex is a dishonor to God. You cannot procreate when you have your penis in another man's anus. You cannot procreate when you have two lesbians eating box. It doesn't work like that. God says man and woman, Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve, and not Sarah and Rebecca. Read. Verse 25, oh. who changed the truth of God into a lie? Who changed the truth of God into a lie? What man says two men could get married? What man passed that? Who said two women could get married? Yeah, you're Brad Pitt, the people you look up to, the so-called white men. Right. Read. And worshiped and served the creature more than the creator. For this cause, God gave them up unto vile affections. So if you want to stay like that, like a transsexual, a tranny, God said he's going to give you up to your own vile affections. Read. For even their women 
this change the natural use into that which is against nature. What is the natural use of a woman? The natural use of a woman is to get married and have children, bear fruit, raise the kids. Now, what is the woman doing? She's having sex changes. She want to be the man. She's changing the natural use. She want to be a lesbian. And to the proof of that God did not make you like that in lesbianism, right? What do you have? You have the bull dagger dyke who's pretending to be a man, and then you have the woman. Now, if the woman truly was a lesbian, why would she get with a bull dagger? Why would she get with a woman that appears to be a man? Because guess what? God didn't make her like that. She still wants something to remind her of the good old days. That's why they use dildos when they have sex. It's not just eating box, but they're using dildos. Because the woman cannot give you that satisfaction that a man can, that your husband can. For you simple lesbians in the audience, read. And likewise, also the men leaving the natural use of the women burn in their lust one toward another. Burn in their lust one to one another. Our men gotta come up out of that effeminate lifestyle. Dyeing your hair all sorts of different colors, wearing your pants under your butt. God did not, God did not raise the Israelites to be like that. You are ordained to be holy men, priests, gods of the earth, to take care of your nation, not to walk around in a homosexual state, an effeminate state. Read. Men with men, working that which is unseemly. Read that again. Brother right there with the, um, the brother right there with the, sh with the shortest table. What do you think about that? Do you think, do you think homosexuals can make it into the kingdom of heaven? Huh? You don't believe in heaven. If you, so if you believe, you shall inherit the kingdom of heaven. Is that correct? So if you're an effeminate man, right? Let's say a man who acts like a woman who has female tendencies. Can he inherit the kingdom of heaven? If you believe, right? Now let me ask you something, brother, because you are our brother, right? So we come out here to teach our people the laws of God. That thought, that thought that you just formulated into words, who put that thought into your head? Who taught you that? I don't believe you. You know why I don't believe you? Because when you were five or six and seven and eight years old, you weren't talking like that. You know who taught you that? The so-called white man started that, and it was passed down to these churches. These churches teach our people, if you believe, all you gotta do is believe. All you gotta say is the name Jesus, and you're gonna get the kingdom of heaven. So God starts off by saying, don't you know that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Think about that, right? There's other levels of sin, other levels of wickedness, but right now we're dealing with homosexuality and effeminism. That is a spirit that can jump on one brother to the next, or one sister to the next. You think God is going to allow two men greased up, oiled up in the bed, in the kingdom of heaven, having sex with each other? Use common sense. Do you think that's going to happen? You think God is going to allow that? Two men giving, giving oil sex, blow jobs to each other? Two women eating each other out? Huh? Common sense. I want you to use your brain. Don't use the white man brain, use the brain that's in your head. You think God is going to allow that? Let's see. Be not deceived, neither fornicators, uh -huh. nor idolaters, uh -huh. nor adulterers, uh -huh. nor effeminate. You hear that, brother? God says don't be an effeminate. God says you cannot inherit the kingdom of God if you are effeminate. If you have effeminate ways, female tendencies. Read it again. From that book. Nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind. Nor abusers with themselves with mankind. Now, brother, brother, let me ask you something. Brother, you heard that? Read it again for the brother. He was occupied. Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers. Nor effeminate, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves of that God. So God says those people are not going to inherit the kingdom of God. We got to repent. So no, your pastor's taught you lies. Your pastor says just all you got to do is believe in the name of Jesus. And you're washed in the blood of Christ. That is not so. That is not true. Read on. 
no thieves, no covetous, no drunkards, no revilers, no extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. You see that? Those people will not inherit the kingdom of God. And you know what? You know what's funny? You know what's crazy without people? I know people think that when Christ comes back, he's just gonna give you a pass and some flowers and say, you know what? You still could live, you can dwell outside of the kingdom of heaven, you just can't come in it. No, you're going to die. God is going to put you to death. When the nuclear missiles come over here to America, you are going to be burnt. Then you're going to be raised up back in and he's going to kill you again. That's the eternal death. Read it again. Read from where you was at. No thieves, no covetous, no drunkards, no revilers, no extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. Read on. And such were some of you. Here's the key thought, brother. The, the key thought. The Apostle Paul says, such for some of you. Come over here for a second. Come, come. Because you know what? I used to be an adulterer, an adulterer, a whoremonger. We all battle different spirits. But we cannot inherit the kingdom of God until we repent. That's why Christ came to die for the sins of the people. Give me Acts, Acts 531. Now when I say the sins of the people, brother, what's your name? Huh? Tony. All right, Tony, nice to meet you. My name is Isaac, all right? Let's hear what Christ said. All right? So if you're battling with any of those things, covetousness, theft, lying, adultery, fornication, effeminism, abusing yourselves with mankind, meaning homosexuality, Christ said you can repent from that. All right? Let's hear who, who, what Christ came to do. Acts chapter 5, verse 31. Him hath God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior, to give repentance to Israel. You hear that, brother? To give repentance to Israel. Who's Israel? Who's Israel? How about you? Are you an Israelite? What's your nationality? I want you to make believe right now you're on a, uh, an employment agency. Make believe I'm the so-called white man, God forbid. But make believe I'm the so-called white man. On your application that you just handed me, here you are applying for a job that's six figures. $120,000 a year, all right, Brother Tony? And I ask you on the checkbox for nationality, what's your nationality? Keep in mind, I'm a white man now. Or you're gonna tell me you're alive. I don't mark that. So when the white man asks you, when he asks you, I know you don't mark it, but if he asks you verbally on the interview, Tony, what is your nationality? Tony, what is your nationality? When I'm asking you, what is your nationality? Don't tell me you're alive, brother, because that's a medical term. When somebody is alive, that means they're not dead. Then I don't know. Okay, that's an honest answer. I could deal with that. I can deal with that. Brother Tony said, Brother Tony says, I don't know. Give me Jeremiah 17 verse 4. I like that. I like that. That's an honest answer. I asked the brother Tony what is his nationality. He said he doesn't know. Because many of our blacks, black men today, they call themselves blacks, African American. That's not their nationality. Those were bywords and proverbs that was given to our people. Because our true nationality was taken away from us, Tony, in what? During what era? When was our nationality taken away from us? Huh? You don't know? Okay, we'll show you. Jeremiah 17, verse 4, and in Isaiah 65, verse 15. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 16, verse 4. And thou, even thyself, shalt discontinue from thy inheritance that I gave thee, and I will cause thee to serve thine enemies. So what? To serve thine enemies. So the Most High says, Thou, even thyself, shalt discontinue from your heritage. Now when you think of the word heritage, right? That's an inheritance, right? Comes from the word inheritance, heritage, right? That goes into your lineage. That goes into your laws. That goes into your nationality. That goes into your language. That goes into your allotment of land, right? God says you're going dis to discontinue from that, and you're going to serve serve, keyword Tony, serve your enemies. Your enemies in a land you know it's not. Now, hmm. Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 48. Huh? Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee in hunger mm -hmm. and in thirst and in nakedness and in want of all things. So God said he's going to send our enemies against us. We're going to have to serve this man in hunger, in thirst, and nakedness. If Tony wants clothes on his back, 
he has to guess what? Serve his enemies. How do you serve your enemies? Working. Whether it's working for low wages or high wages. Nine to five, guess what? The whole earth was given to the Israelites, but we lost it when we broke God's laws. God says, if you want to drink water, Aquafina, Poland Springs, uh, um, um, Avian, um, Aquafina, what are some other, um, uh, VG water, Poland Springs, guess what? You got to serve your enemies. You want food, you got to serve your enemies. Read. In hunger, in thirst, and in nakedness, uh -huh. and in want of all things. Uh -huh. And he shall put a yoke. Hold it, this man, let's say it's not, let's say the word white is not in there. The word Caucasian is, is not in there. God says, this particular man, you're gonna serve him in the want of all things, right? Food, thirst, and clothing. And this man is gonna put a what? A yoke of iron upon thy neck. Who did this to our people? Who did this, Tony? Let's see if Tony knows the answer, or is he gonna say, you tell me. Yeah, Tony doesn't know the answer. I think he does. The same man who told you that you were a Negro, Tony, the so-called white man. His forefathers put yokes of iron on our necks till we were destroyed. His forefathers are the one that we had to serve in hunger, thirst, and nakedness because we broke God's laws. Because we were walking around effeminate, homosexual, lesbianism, adultery, idolatry, breaking the, on the Sabbath, buying and selling, and working on the Sabbath. We continued in those things. We didn't want to repent. So God gave us up to our enemies. Read. Until. On what? Until. One word. Big meaning. Until. He have destroyed thee. So when the so-called white man completely destroyed us, that's when he let us go. Ding, 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 ding. What is that ring? What is that talking about? Do you know, Tony? When were, when were, in what period of time were the so-called blacks let go? When was slavery, I'm gonna give you the answer, when was slavery emancipated? Under who? Okay. Very good, he knows, he knows the history of his forefathers. But, but. Yeah, come on the mic. You gotta learn something too, we gotta teach you too. But, but my great, 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 great grandfather. Tony, don't walk away. Was, don't get scared. Was, 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 Andrew Johnson, the president, after Lincoln got killed. Andrew, so, Andrew Jackson? Yeah. That was your great grand. Your, oh, really? So. Wow. So, so, so actually, so, so actually, if it wasn't for him, cause, cause Lincoln got shot, my, my grandfather signed off for. For, for all slavery okay. to end. All right, okay. Okay, very interesting. Now we're gonna reveal something about Andrew Jackson. Get me, get me Amos 3 verse seven and then get me the book of Genesis about Gad. Amos 3 verse seven. We're gonna reveal, reveal something to you about Andrew Jackson. Amos chapter three verse seven. Surely the Lord will do nothing but he revealeth his secret unto his servants, the prophets. God said he's not gonna do nothing unless he reveals his secret unto his servant, right? What are the secrets that you are the Israelite sister? You are the Israelites according to the Bible. What is another secret? That your forefather, your man, um, what's your name, what's your name? Uh, my name is William James Smith. All right, William James Smith. God has revealed unto his servants, which are us, that your forefather, Andrew Jackson, was the devil that the Bible speaks about. Your forefather, Andrew Jackson, was a pale-faced beast who destroyed the native Indians. Because Andrew Jackson is the one who obliterated our brothers, the Native Americans, the tribe of Gad. That's what God revealed to us. Read what you got. Read. Zechariah 11, verse 5. The this is what your forefather Andrew Jackson did. The book of Zechariah, chapter 11, verse 5. Whose, whose possessors slayed them? Because Andrew Jackson slayed the tribe of Gad, who are the native Indians. He used the Gatling gun to take them down. Don't shake your head because that's historic. We got historical proof that your forefather Andrew Jackson, this is what he did to the Native Americans. Read. And hold themselves not guilty. And the so called white man, he held himself not guilty. Just like he's doing right now in Missouri. Shoot Mike Brown, hold yourself not guilty. Oh, he reached for my gun. 
or he got on his knees, so I thought he was gonna kill me. You so-called white people, you obliterate a nation of people and hold yourselves not guilty. And you don't care. You don't care because why? The pride of thine heart has deceived thee. Read. And they that sell them say, they that who? And they that sell them. So was Andrew Jackson, did Andrew Jackson have slaves? You better believe it. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. I beg to differ, young man. I beg to differ. Did, he, did Andrew Jackson murder Native Indians? Yes, he did. Who what? Who what? And they the sell Lord. them, yes, say, know. blessed be the Lord. And you saw called white people, you said, blessed be the Lord. In God we trust, just like you put on the back of your dollar. But nah, you don't trust in God. You don't trust in God. You know who's your God? Gold, oil, and diamonds. And drugs. Gold, oil, and diamonds, and gold, oil, and drugs. And Andrew Jackson had a slave plantation in North Carolina. So guess what? He had our forefathers in slavery. Get me Genesis now. Yeah. Genesis chapter 49 verse 19. Gad, a troop shall overcome him. Who's Gad? Gad is the Native American. The prophecy to Gad was that a troop, troop shall overcome them. Who's the troop that overcame the Native Americans? It's called the U.S. Cavalry, headed by the spear key cracker named Andrew Jackson. So God says that a troop shall overcome them. Now, look, it's not your fault because that was ordained to happen because we broke the laws of the Most High. Now, even though that was ordained to happen, does that take the weight of your people not being the devil that the Bible speaks of? Exactly. You agree with me that your people are the devil that the Bible speaks of? Exactly. Read that again. Genesis 49 verse 19. Gad, a troop shall overcome him, but he shall overcome at the last. Now the prophecy always also says that Gad, the Native Americans, are going to raise up. The Native Americans are going to raise up in these last days. So you so-called blacks and Hispanics. Those who come to this truth. Those who come to this knowledge that you are the Israelites. That the Bible speaks of. Alright? You're not supposed to be effeminate and homosexual men. You're supposed to be the true men of God. Warriors. The Israelites that the Bible speaks of. Now how are we going to overcome in the last? Give me Isaiah the 14th chapter. Because yeah, we know we are on the bottom. We know that God has used the other nations to oppress us and to afflict us, to whip us back into shape. But guess what? What goes up must come down. Yeah. And you so called white people, guess what? You're at the end of your rulership. That's when we're able to even come out here on Rockaway in Glenwood and speak like this. Because at one point, we would be lynched. Yeah. I'll be hanging off that light post right, right, right there, right, speaking right, like this. Right. Yeah. Here, but the right. simple fact that the Most High has moved the spirit of any so called white people to give us a little bit of freedom to bring out this truth in his last days, all praises to the Most High. Your kingdom is coming down. The Arabs are rising up against you. The nations are rising up against you. Your economy is at, is at its lowest. Your stocks is at its lowest. You white people are losing your mind. You're catching a little bit of the hell and what's going on. You're killing yourselves. Just like the CEO of Enron. Just like your, your, your boy, Robin Williams. He slit his wrist and hung himself because he caught a little bit of hell. But guess what? We caught, we've been catching hell ever since we got off them slave ships. You don't see us killing ourselves like that. Yeah. We're killing ourselves other ways. Yeah, Gang, black, black, black on black violence, black black drugs. Why? Because your people taught us that. Your people taught us how to hate. Who taught us how to hate our nose, the complexion of our skin, to where we bleach ourselves? Like the picture we just took with the Benjamite, looking like Casper the Ghost, with yellow hair, trying to be like the white woman with yellow hair. Who taught us how to do those things? Who taught us to hate the other brother that looks like you? Who taught us to get on our knees and worship worship a man that looks like our oppressor? The other nations did. Read what you got. Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 14 verse 1. This is the conclusion of what's going to happen to the other nations. Thus saith the Lord. For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob. You hear that young man? God says the Lord will have mercy on Jacob. Who's Who's Jacob? Jacob is the brother with the royal blue hat standing by the Capital One ATM. Jacob is you, brother. You are the Israelites that the Bible speaks of, but you don't want to hear that. We come out here to tell you that you are the greatest people on the earth. You get mad. How the hell do you get mad at a people telling you that you are the greatest people on the earth? You know why? Because your self-esteem is so destroyed. How the hell can we be God's chosen if we catching so much hell? How the hell can we be God's chosen and we're slaves? 
We're blacks, we're spicks, we're niggas. We're getting shot down in Missouri. Guess what? All of that is biblical. All of that is, profess is prophetic. God says, surely in your affliction you shall seek me early. That's what God says. Let's read of the conclusion of the matter. For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob. So the mercy is only going to be for the Israelites. You hear that, sister? Mercy is only for you. You hear that, sister, with the glasses right here? You are the Israelite that the Bible speaks of. Right. God is only going to have mercy on you if you if you repent and keep his laws. God is not going to have mercy on this Arab right here in, the, in, the, in, the, in this mark, right? Whatever this is right here. God is not going to have mercy on the descendants of Andrew Jackson. God is not going to have mercy on the Asians. We're speaking the Bible plainly, but you never heard it like this. That's why you make faces. You're like, these brothers are racist, but guess what? I got news for you. Here's another secret that's been revealed to the prophets. God is a racist. That's right. Christ is a racist. That's right. The angels are racist. That's right. You simple people, as simple as you can be. Read. And will yet choose Israel. And will only choose Israel. The word yet is only. And set them in their own land. Because guess what? We are not in our own land. God said he's going to set us in our own land. Our own land is the land of Israel and everywhere that the soles of our feet touch it. So guess what? Rocco and Glenwood really belongs to us. So why you so-called blacks don't own any stores? Why you don't own Walgreens? Why you don't own VIM? Why you don't own Radio Shack? You got the other nations in your neighborhood selling you their products. And they take the money, go back and build up their kingdom. Their neighborhoods. I'm Elder Nathaniel, Israel United in Christ. YouTube likes to shut our channels down, as some of you have noticed, <laughs> ever so often. Subscribing to join IUIC will assure you will always stay connected to our YouTube accounts. We want to do our best to make sure this truth gets out. Please click and join our subscriber YouTube channel called Join IUIC to stay linked to all of our videos. So again, please make sure you subscribe to this and join IUIC channel to get your latest updates on all our YouTube channels. Shalom.